Hey guys, Dave here. This is SPI capsule number one, the creature that ate Sheboygan. It's from SPI. I think this was made in the late 1970s. This is a highly sought after micro game from SPI. They also made a box version of this. Sheboygan is a city in Wisconsin as far as I know. I haven't been there in a long time, so I assume they're talking about the city in Wisconsin. I don't remember any big buildings like this when I was there, though, so, but that was a long time ago. Anyhow, let's read the back of this. Paid 35 bucks for this, plus like 9 or $10 shipping, so it costs more than uh, most of the SBI uh, capsule games. From the murky depths of Lake Michigan, the creature rose, tossing its massive head. Slowly it dragged its great body from the waters, watchful for any telltale movement around, along Route 42. It began its journey down the superhighway, finding sustenance in the 18-wheeled Goliaths of the road that fed its craving for steel and maintained its monstrous strength. Reports of panic among motorists and residents poured into police, army, and air force stations and bases. Reports too incredible to be believed. Only when Manitowoc vanished into the cavernous depths of the creature's insatiable maw did the rumors acquire terrifying substance. The ravening creature from the depths was headed for Sheboygan. Milwaukee and Chicago lay beyond. The creature that ate Sheboygan pits mankind against monster in a fast-moving action-paced game that can be played to its faithful conclusion in 90 minutes. Army, police, firemen, and citizens, and any of several available monsters are per portrayed by cardboard playing pieces, which are maneuvered through a schematic representation of the beleaguered city of Sheboygan. Simple probability charts, yeah, blah, 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 we get the idea. So anyhow, it's a, basically a Godzilla-type game in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, that comes out of Lake Michigan. So let's take a look inside. Map is really simple. It's just a street view map with some buildings and looks like a river here. So, but it still looks better than a metagaming map. But let's see what else is in here. Eh, counters, they're all right. Uh, back then, counters weren't as good as they are now, but you got helicopters, looks like firefighters here, some kind of armed boat, police cars, tanks, infantry, artillery, one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know if that's so you can uh, draw numbers out of a cup instead of using a dice or what the story is with that. There's a big monster, there's a giant robot, another big monster, Godzilla looking dude, giant bat and giant spider. And looks like they got some spider webs for the spider. And then you got people here, I don't know if these are civilians or police or what they are. And down here, you have wreckage counters. I guess I would assume if a building gets damaged, you put that counter on it. And down here, you have some counters that say 1R, 3, and 2. I'm not sure what those are about. And they're all single-sided counters. Here's the charts they come with. Terrain effects chart, because you can't put it on the map. Uh, Building destruction results table, combat results table, all this stuff should have been on the map. And the other... Oh, but they do have uh, one for each player, so I'll give them props where props do. That's good. And here's the rule book. Let's see how many pages it is. So it's four pages. I don't know if the box version has additional rules or additional scenarios or what. This is the micro game version. So it's talking about setups. So you got to purchase units. Initial placement. Sequence of play starts with monster player turn, monster movement phase, monster combat, human player, human movement, human combat, and fire phase. So the two sides have the same phase, just the humans at the uh, end of their phase have a uh, ranged attack. 
Oh, I'm sorry, that fire phase is not ranged attack. I thought that was fire as in like uh, range fire. No, that's actually fire boat units putting out fires. Okay, that's cool. Okay, here it's talking about movement. Effects of terrain, stacking, only one monster uh, can be in a hex. Two human u units maximum can be stacked together. And helicopters, firemen, and populace don't count towards stacking. And it's going over combat here. First attack by units, which I assume is humans, and then attack by monsters. And there's a special phase here for building destruction. That's good. So this reminds me a little bit of the, in addition to remind me of the Godzilla movie, it reminds me of Rampage, the video game. I think Rampage came out after this. And now it's talking about fording rivers, populace, and police, and then fire. So that's putting out fires. And monster record sheets and now special abilities. Flame and attack abilities, other abilities, uh, web spinning, great height. The monster is of such great size. When he finally falls as a result of death, he will crush anything that he falls on. That sounds about right. Fear of mobilization, blinding light. Twice during the game, the monster may flash with blinding light. During the subsequent human combat phase, the monster may not be attacked by any humans. I assume that means that the humans are temporarily blinded. Jumping over buildings. Radiation. Hmm. Cool. That disrupts radio communication. And then there's mind control, even. So once during... Uh, the game, uh, a monster can take over one human unit for one turn. And then there's flying as an ability. Victory conditions. The game ends when the monster dies, or when all human units have been eliminated, or when all, or excuse me, or when the monster's victory level is exceeded. If all human units are eliminated, the monster wins automatically. Otherwise, the players total the number of Victory points the monster player receives and refer to the scenario listings. So you can win by victory points also. And the monster gets five victory points for each populace eliminated. Three victory points for each destroyed low building, five for each destroyed high building, and five for each destroyed bridge hex. Learning scenario, basic scenario, advanced scenario, A, advanced scenario, B, and city eating scenario. So there's five scenarios. That's not bad for a micro game, so you get some replayability there. <laughs> Here it says historical notes. That's funny. <laughs> and it's by Greg Kastikian. He made a bunch of SPI uh, Capsule games. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly or not, but all the games of his that I've played have been good So he's a good game designer. He's also got a game out there called bug-eyed monsters They want to steal your women or something like that I've been looking for but the only copy I've seen is some guy trying to get $125 for it. I'm not paying $125 for that, but I'll wait till I can get it for like $20, but anyhow, thanks for watching I hope you liked the video, and please click like on it if you didn't. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, have a good evening.